and more and more people out there, they're waking up to the fact that the schooling system for most people is broken. The way we've been told the 40-40-40 plan is definitely not working. And people are basically saying, I've got to do something different. And the mm. fact that you're out there, Steve, helping people and showing people how to do this, I think it's an incredible thing. It really, 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 really is. I don't really want to be looking at my bank account at the end of the month, worrying about whether I can put enough fucking petrol in my car to get to work. As soon as I did that first 8K, I was like, I never ever fucking want to be poor again. People was a big one for me. So like in our kind of business, you can go anywhere from like 10K a month to 20K a month as like on your own without it causing you too many difficulties. And then the difference from like 20K a month to 100K a month or 200K a month is literally just getting other people to do the jobs that you're doing yeah, and stop you doing it. That. that was that was the hardest bit for me. Um, what's been one or two of your biggest challenges maybe over the last year or so? You know, you've scaled the business mm. now just under three million. What's some of the stuff you're facing now? How have you come overcome it? Or, you know, how can we help you overcome it? Um, Welcome to another edition of the Dealmaker Podcast, and I have a very special guest in the studio, a real entrepreneur, Steve McGrath, who now teaches personal trainers how to run online businesses. And we are going to do a deep dive on everything to do with business, investing, the good times, the bad times, and what you can be doing to get out there and get some really, really great results. So, uh, Steve, welcome to the studio. Uh, good to have you here, mate. So, where are you living in the UK right now? Um, I'm in Cheshire at the moment. Okay, I grew up great. in North Manchester. Um, and then I got sick of people trying to kick my back door in to get in the house, okay. get my car. So I, uh, <laughs> I moved to slightly nicer areas. But yeah, in the in the northwest. Excellent. Uh, well, really great to have you travel down to sunny Essex. Not that it's that sunny today. And you've got a really inspiring story. And you're doing some really, really great stuff out there. Um, just take us back before you got into the world of business. Mm -hmm. um, what did life look like? Um, what were you doing? And what then led you into getting into business? So I started off as a physics teacher. Um, I got out of I got out of uni and decided that I was just I'd done sciences like all the way through college and school and stuff. I think just because I was good at it. Um, and the only really thing left to do was be a teacher because right. I ran out. <laughs> I didn't want to do a PhD, and I was like, you know, when you're at that age where like I wasn't, I didn't uh, feel like I was really le ready to leave education because I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So like the idea is you just stay in education. Instead of doing a PhD, I kind of went down the the teaching route, and then it was really good for like the first couple of years because I just felt like I was still learning, I was getting into it. And then when it like when the reality of actually doing the job for the rest of my life kind of hit me, I was like, oh, I fucking can't do this. And, and, and what was it about? the reality of doing the job for the rest of your life, what certain aspects really stood out for you and you were like, there is no effing way yeah. I am staying here for this. Couple of like stories I always remember. The first one, everyone's fucking depressed. Right. Like I genuinely <laughs> felt like everyone in the what, staff the room, yeah, they fucking yeah. hated oh, it. No. Everyone was just always whinging about like, this is happening and the union this and like we've got this meeting then and I genuinely remember there was a conversation where there was two teachers talking about the kinds of antidepressants that they were on oh. and I was like fuck that like that sounds awful um, and then it sounds shit because it's like dead materialistic but like when I was growing up like I always I just wanted nice things I wanted to be able to go on nice holidays or like I wanted a nice car or, like I wanted nice clothes and then you look around the car park at school and they're all mm. driving like fucking seven year old like mm. battered Cleos. And I was mm. like, these people are 15 years ahead of the career than I am. Like, is that what I've got to look forward to? So I just got to a point where like, I knew that working in a job with a pay scale like that, it was like, oh, well done. You've done five years. Here's an extra 300 quid a month. Yeah, no way. I was like, I can't be asked. And then I'd always PT'd like, I think, I think I qualified when I was like 17 or 18. And then I'd worked as like a fitness instructor. I'd done lifeguard, I'd worked in leisure pretty much all the way through uni and stuff like that. So I was doing like um, PT on the side to like top up my wage. It was like 80 quid a day, which was sound. And then school got dead funny about it because I was like, well, I can't do this meeting. I've, I've got to go like train my client. And they were they got to a point where they were like, look, you're either gonna have to stop doing that or... Mm. So I just ended up leaving pretty much. Um, I just played the maths in my head and I was like, right, well, I could do four hours work a day as a PT in a gym, not have anyone tell me what to do, not have been told to went to have a fucking lunch break or anything like that, and I could earn more money yeah, than I'm doing it. And have the freedom. Yeah, 
Yeah, sometimes like people people out there today that are on you know twenty five, thirty, thirty five k a year, you know they're having to basically be a slave for that salary. I don't know how people uh, live on it. I'm like, going to be really honest. Like, yeah. how the fuck do you live on twenty five yeah. grand a year? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you can because people do. Yeah. But like. Well, you've, you've literally got to watch every single penny. Like, like, like you know, I, I wasn't born into money, but like you, growing up, I really wanted nice things. Mm. Like, I used to listen to my mum cry herself to sleep because she was skint as and couldn't put food on the table. And there's me and my mum and my little brother, like, living in some crappy, horrible apartment. Like, mm. it was... And, and, and I used to go and obsess and look at magazines, and I used to really love people in nice suits and yeah. women dress well and fast cars and all that type of stuff. And somewhere at a young age, it was just like, I want to have all of that mm. stuff. What well, Was there anything in your childhood that you wanted nice clothes and nice things? Where, where did that come from? I don't even think it was particularly like a, a want for like the nicest things. Yeah. I think like, I never thought about, I never had designer clothes when I was a kid. I never thought about wanting designer clothes. Like I never really wanted like, I remember when I was a kid, well, not when I was a kid, but even when I was like a teenager and growing up, I just what, you remember when they did the first did like the AMG Merc with the spoiler on the back, yeah. the 45 one. I just really wanted one of them, which is actually now a really fucking expensive car. I don't yeah. know how they've got up to 50 grand, yeah. but they're at 50 grand now. But at the time they were like, like a Ford Focus RS. Yeah. I'd still buy one now. Yeah, yeah, I, I actually them. really need to go and buy one because they're, they're not going to be able to get them soon. But like that was the, you know, when you just look at that yeah. kind of stuff, whereas I still weren't going to get that as a teacher. And I don't know. I don't know what it was. I don't I don't remember really a trigger point. I just even now as an adult, like I just yeah. think, why would I wanna live in an area where I'm not safe? Like pe everyone around is struggling. Cause I know what that forces people mm. to do. I don't mm. really wanna live in a situation like that. Mm. I don't really wanna be looking at my bank account at the end of the month worrying about and I've I've been there worrying about whether I can put enough fucking petrol in my car to get to work. <sighs> Yeah, I've missed parking tickets because I couldn't pay them at the time when they came through and then ended up with like getting court summons and stuff from literally fucking parking in the wrong space mm. on the side mm. of the street and I just I just didn't really want to live you like know, that. You know what, it's, it sounds so simple and it can be simple. It sounds to me like you just made the decision. It's a decision you've made mm. that you are going to become successful no matter what. And, and I think it, it does come down to making that decision. Now, what's behind that decision is a whole different world. And we're yeah. going to explore that, right? And there's ups and downs and challenges. And there's people that are going to get in your way and hold you back. And um, entrepreneurship can be a really tough, lonely place. I'm mm. not here to sugarcoat anything. But I'd say to anyone listening to this right now, if you are in a position and you, you are that on that 25 or 30, or you can't even do much for 50 or 60 or 100 grand a year. This, I'd this, argue this, that, that, I know. You, you just can't. People really. hate you for saying it, but, like, know, after but you get taxed, like, it's, yeah, it's not a fucking lot of money. Tax, yeah. You know, people will lose 30 to 70% of their money. Every pound, 30p to 70p goes on tax. So you have to find tax efficient ways mm. to keep your money. And one of those ways is to buy, be an entrepreneur and be a business owner and use all the, the UK legal loopholes on how to grow a business mm. profitably. So you made that decision. Um, and then you start PTing, right? So you're out there, you quit your job. And what was the next part of your chapter? So I was doing all right. I, re I reckon I got a bit lazy at that point, to be right. fair. I was doing like, I'd gone from, you know, 24 grand a year as a teacher to doing like maybe four, maybe five grand on a good month oh, as a okay. PT. But like, I was in the gym for like four, five hours a day. Like <laughs> I thought it was basically stealing a living at that point. Because coming from somewhere where like you had yeah. to be in at eight o'clock and you... Was it was almost like you felt like you made it? Do you get complacent? Uh, I don't think I felt like I made it, but okay. I just, I felt, I felt comfortable enough yeah. Like at that age. And I think sometimes that's dictated by your environment as well. Mm. Like I didn't have really any friends that made any more money than that. Yeah. Like, you know, where I'm from, even earning 40 grand a year was a fucking really good salary. So I think sometimes you just, you do tend to stay at the level mm. of, of where you are. Um, and then I had an accident in the gym. So I ended up having like major surgery on both of my knees. I was in a wheelchair for like a good portion of the year. Wow. So... I how did that affect you? Oh, it was fucking rough, was, you know. Yeah, like when people okay. are like get get income protection insurance and all well, that shit. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, 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 of course I fucking will. I don't know if I've still not done it, but <laughs> probably should. Where I'm like, yeah, I'll do that. And then something like that happens where you can't work. You're like, oh fuck, like 
what am I supposed to do here? So you must have lost your clients. Lost all my clients. Lost, um, lost your income. And I couldn't really go back to the gym because there was mm. a load of like health and safety issues. Like at that point, I technically like wasn't able-bodied enough to be training. Right. So like, I'm sure you can have a disabled personal trainer, but like mm. the gym that I was working at wasn't really well set up for like access yeah. and stuff like that. Um, so I'd heard about like online training. I'd like, I'd done little bits without realizing it, like writing programs for my mates and charging them 50 quid for it and stuff like that. Um, but then I bought this course of like, this is how you actually structure it. And this is how you set it up. I remember I got like the welcome pack for it. And it was like, it was like a kickstart guide. It was like, do these 10 things to get your first X amount of clients. Right. And I think I told, I sold like 20 at 400 quid, right. which isn't a massive amount, but like eight, <laughs> making eight grand in a month after you just don't fuck all for like 12 months wow. and, and basically been in bed. I was like, oh, this has, this has legs in it, this. Wow. And then I just carried it. Like luckily, because I'd been a PT for so long, because I'd been around, I'd, I'd been training since I was 15. Mm. All my family and friends knew I was, you know, the, the person to ask if you needed help with like a diet or something. So when I launched it, I had a decent reputation already. Yeah. I was in good, I was in a lot better shape than I'm in now, but I was in really good shape myself. So like it, it felt easy. Yeah, like I was in a good spot for it. Like just, a natural, natural uh, progression, really. Yeah, I just needed down, the right yeah. like mechanism of like yeah. what to do with it. Like I think I had all the pieces there. I just needed somewhere to go. Like right, do this, 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 and this, and then that's how you make mm. it work. Um, and I did like I think I did one, two, five in the first year, wow, which nice. was always like. When I was growing up, I remember like my dad said he did a hundred grand one year. Now he run a groundworks company, so I'm not sure whether he actually made a hundred grand or whether he just billed a hundred grand's worth of work. Yeah. But I just remember that number. <laughs> and I was like, that's in my head, I'm like, right. that's a lot of money. Yeah. And then I think like head teacher salaries are like they're, they're probably not quite a hundred, no. but like they're up there. So even when I was teaching, I was always like, Oh, well, if I get there, that's what I learned. So like to do that in the first year of like being basically an online personal trainer sat on my laptop, I was like, oh, fuck. Wow. So, so, so at this point, just so we're clear, this is, this is training other people. This is training people so to this, lose weight. and To lose weight. Yeah. Oh, great. So you're, you're in your comfort of your own home. You're teaching people. Oh, sorry, you're training people how to get into better shape. And um, what, what was the difference between doing it online and in person? Did you, the clients getting better results? Was it easier to scale? It's, it's way easier to scale. Okay, so the great. time you spend per client is yeah. way, way less. I think it works better because you have to focus more on the things that people actually need. So when you're in the gym, they just turn up for the hour. Some people, it's like just a fucking accountability appointment yeah. where they're like, well, I'm here, I've paid, so yeah. this counts as most of it. Whereas like when you do online training, it's more like, it's more around the lifestyle and the nutrition, mm. which I think is what 90% of people need. Yeah. So it was really well suited towards that. and. When I first started, like I was on spreadsheets, but then really quickly, like software started coming out Great. to help people, like to help you manage it better. Because um, at one point I had like 40 clients and I was like texting them all every morning and texting them all before I went to bed <laughs> and sending people out. I still have some of the Excel sheets on my computer, weirdly. But like, it was really haphazard. Yeah. Like I would have struggled. I ended up at like my peak of like on my own before yeah. I had staff, I ended up doing like 95 clients. Wow. So it's a lot of people to manage. It's a lot of people yeah. to manage, but like, I also used to teach like fucking five classes of physics with 30 right, kids okay, in it. So to me, to me, I was like, it's not actually that fucking difficult yeah. compared to it. And then once you got to that level, you know, and you're on this road of entrepreneurship and you, you made your first 100K, um, what was going on for you then, you know, mentally? How, how did you feel like being in that spot? Did you get hunger to keep growing? Did you get complacent? How did it make you feel? So like, as soon as I did that first 8K, yeah. I was like, I'd never ever fucking want to be poor again. <laughs> Just cause. <laughs> and you know what, it's, it's, it's a fucking good feeling when you get paid yeah. money and you, you work for that and you're up at eight, nine, 10, 12 K a month. Life can, if you're smart with mm. it, it can really start to change and people tuning in here it is absolutely possible for anyone listening to this with the right opportunity and the right people around them, they can start generating that type of income, right? Yeah, I think for me, like the the life change was like the biggest between like doing fuck all and, and making hundred mm. grand. I think that was like, well, the biggest like worry change is like, I weren't worried about bills anymore. I weren't worried about X, Y, and Z. I think like as a case of like safety and stability for myself, that was, and then the difference from like, 100k to a million was like I think that's where like my mindset really changed on it and like 
my outlook on life was really different. I don't think the actual day to day of my life was probably rather similar versions of the stuff that I was already doing. Yeah. But like that was where like my mind really had, had, how did you go from your hundred? So anyone tuning in now that's maybe got a hundred grand a year business, because business is business, mm. right? As long as you've got a good product and you've got good clients yeah. and you serve properly, anyone can scale. So how, how did you go from a hundred K to that first million? People. Okay. People was a big one for me. So like in, in our kind of business, you can, depending on what you charge, you can go anywhere from like 10 K a month to 20 K a month as like on your own without it causing you too many difficulties. And then the difference from like 20K a month to 100K a month or 200K a month is literally just getting other people to do the jobs that you're doing right, and great, stop you good, doing it. That. That, was, that was the hardest bit for me, okay, to be honest. Because what, what was hard about that and how did you overcome it? Because you I obviously had, did it. Yeah. I just, it's just new, isn't it? Like I was mid 20s, well, late 20s probably by that point. I'd never done management. Right. I'd never been in management. I'd always been in a job or, or worked on my own for yeah. myself. And like the way I'd kind of grown the business, everyone was like teaching like, oh, here's how you get your first 10 clients. Or here's how you make your first three to five grand. And I did eight grand month one. So I just felt like I was like, oh fuck, like none of that's relevant <laughs> for me anymore. And then everyone I would ask that had been in there long ago, like was already still running the business. So they weren't gonna fucking speak to me because why would they help me? I'm, a, I'm competition. Yeah. So I just kind of fumbled through the dark on it a lot um, felt like you was on your own i hired my friends to be honest which yeah. was a really shit idea okay. long term <laughs> but like it, how many of them still you mates today <laughs> well, Mate, that's a question for another fucking podcast <laughs> um no is the short answer yeah, there's a mad, much longer one behind yeah, it yeah, yeah it's, it's tough but i did what i thought was right at the yeah. time and i just wanted people that i could trust um and it, it got me yeah. forward and, and at this point had your business model changed into coaching other person no no so this was still oh, right this this was, was so still i had online i had coaches training the clients wow. and then i was doing the sales and the lead generation Great. stuff um we had like a feeder program so we had like an eight week program that was quite it wasn't low ticket but it was like 150 quid for eight weeks they do that and then they descend into the high ticket one okay so we, we at any point we had like three four hundred people on this group one and then we yeah. had like four coaches dealing with like okay. 40 clients each Great. on the top end so it was it was bonkers yeah. like and then the, the business coaching started when COVID happened. So I didn't actually do it on purpose. I think it was like a, it was a balance of COVID happened. Then people started going, oh, I've definitely got to go online now because the gym's shut. So then everyone was like, well, who's the top online? I think, and this is one of the reasons why I, I kicked myself for getting rid of my fitness business a little mm. bit. Because I think when people look at business coaches, they go, ah, you're trying to make money off me. Whereas when you've got a fitness business, they go to you and they go, oh, you're doing exactly what I want to do. Yeah. So can I ask you for help? Well, I get it in the property space. Oh, you're yeah. now just making money from teaching people how to do property. Now I've got a property portfolio and I'm very active yeah. in property, right? But people just have like this weird mindset sometimes when it comes to coaches, mentors, they don't actually see the bigger picture. They you find just, that's worth with English people? Yeah, you know what? They just think we're after their cash. And look, ultimately, I'm not a fucking charity. Yeah. And I'm a good guy and I'll provide a good service. But you, when you pay, you pay attention. Mm. And people just don't get that. And they want all the reward, but they're not willing to put an element of the risk in. Um, yeah, it's, it's absolutely... I think it's quite it's funny, mad. though, when like your program helps other people make money. Because, like, how do you think I'm still in business? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm not in business because I'm shit, am I? <laughs> like, if nobody ever made any fucking money by yeah. paying me... They wouldn't pay me for very long. Well, their and success then is your success, and they become your biggest fans. They become your client testimonials. They're the people that are shouting about you online. That then generates more business, and that's how you've grown a fantastic movement over the last few years. And uh, you know, you're going from strength to strength. So, um, okay, so then that started, and then this is where we are today, right? Yeah, we did. <laughs> So like when we launched, like I dabbled in it at first. I think like everyone does, like I had a few different, I was like trying to figure out how I wanted to do it. Did I want to do a course or did I want to do like a weekly thing? And then I settled on like the coaching model that we've got now, which is obviously then gone through different bits. But I think when we properly launched, we did like a hundred grand month one. Right, and nice. I was like, oh, this has probably definitely got legs then. Cause like before we'd, we'd done similar numbers, but it was like through like, off splits of yeah, like three or four it. different products, whether this was just like one thing. And I was like, right, this definitely has a route forward. And then 
I, I put so much focus onto growing that that I kind of left the fitness mm. business to I left the coaches to kind of do it and I was like you guys just and then knock just yourselves slowly out. but surely it just yeah so I, I just slowly removed myself from it to the point where like, I could turn around to the guys and was like look I've got fuck all involvement in this anymore so here's I think at that point I'd I'd let my kind of salary from it dwindle mm. down so like the money was still going to those guys but yeah. I I'd kind of built mine over here so it got to the point where like I was taking the money to pay them so it was a bit like look just have the clients like look after him I'm, I'm doing this now and we, we kind of left it there um and then we went full into it and we did like i think we did 1.5 year nice, one and nice. then we did just under i think just under three last year we moved to dubai last year so like i'm oh, a bit great. i'm a bit hazy with uh, like what Durham <laughs> changes into and, and what point we got like three different servers from that year. so you based dubai and the uk or just fully dubai i, I live in the uk but so i'm UK. i'm okay. not operational so a lot of okay, our central great. staff are in dubai okay, like our you. coo is permanent resident over there. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay, great. So you say three point five million. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's 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 good going. Um, what Sorry, is, no, just under three. We did just one point five okay, year one, and then so, just so under one point five. Then to just under three. What is it about business that you enjoy the most? I think it's just like challenging, isn't it? It's yeah, like yeah. problem solving all mm. the time. I think it's the same reason why you go to the gym, like when you go to the gym, you get the most results in like the first kind of year yeah. and then you're like your body's, you're kind of a gym person then yeah. like you have a good, sh but then you can, t you keep going, even though there's no real need for you to keep mm. going and putting as much effort into it as you do, but you do because you just enjoy the process. Yeah. And I think that's where I'm at with business now is right. like, there's still goals that I've got and there's still like stuff I want to do, this stuff I want to buy, the stuff I want to buy for my family and stuff. But like, really, if you took all that away, I'd still do it because yeah. it's like, I think you just, what the fuck else are you supposed to yeah. do? And, and I think as well, one of the great things about having a fantastic business that's profitable is that, okay, you can pay yourself some good money. Mm. Um, you can be tax efficient. You can run expenses through your business. And then ultimately, one of the reasons why I just love business is because I want to become an investor. Yeah. And I ultimately want to invest that money into different types of investments. Uh, where are you at with investing? And <laughs> what's, your, what's your view on that element? <laughs> ah, so, and this is... This is probably a good thing for, I think, a lot of your audience. I would highly recommend anyone that's investing to learn how to do it instead of giving Great. your money to other people. I, I am so 100% like, I went down that this. road and there's n there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing yeah. wrong with what, like, so I invested with a couple of guys that I know quite well. It's It's been fine. Mm. The problem is, like, I'm so... I'm so balanced on, like, I, don't, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Right. So I didn't understand, like how deals could change and how mortgage rates could change and how mortgage percentages right. could change. So like I, at one point, I think I invested like 150 grand into this project and then somebody bought the development next to it and then started building very similar apartments and then the rental yields changed and all of that stuff. And, and then too many like offshore investors bought the property so they wouldn't invest certain mortgage lenders wouldn't lend on it. So I ended up only only being offered a, like, a, I think it was a 55% mortgage when they right. told me it was gonna be 75. <laughs> This was like three weeks before completion. Right. So basically I was like, when the fuck were you gonna tell me this? And we're like, yeah, we've been oh. trying to sort it. And I'm like, you've not sorted it though, have you? And they're no, like, no, and now you've got a gun to your head on it. So they're like, cool, we need buy another 200 grand in three weeks. And I was like, you could have told me that fucking seven or eight months yeah, ago and yeah. it might have been a bit easier. Yeah. Like you're, ask you're asking me to strip out my business now to oh. like afford this investment. It was supposed to be like a safe, you know, yeah. got that Safety aside, fucking note. put it yeah, somewhere and yeah. knock it out. And now they're like, oh. cool, now you need to go fucking generate some cash from it. And I was like, I'm never doing this again. Mm, painful. So like now I'm definitely in the position where like every investment I make, I want to learn it and I want to yeah. understand it. Even yeah. if, if I don't do that, I'm just going to put it into stocks yeah, and yeah. just fucking leave it. Because yeah. at least it doesn't need me to understand yeah. the whole different thing. But I think property for me was one that... I liked the idea of, but didn't do the work that yeah. I needed to do and just went, oh yeah, someone else will take yeah. care of it for me. Now, I think I think it's really important. I've, I've had similar experiences where I've given people money or invested into certain projects and it's all gonna be fine and it's not fine and lost a lot of money. And over these last you know, seven or eight years, I've really took it upon myself mm. to really understand investing, how to make, manage and multiply money because you've got people in their 70s and 80s, the pensions, most pensions aren't worth what they're written on. Yeah. People can't afford the electric bills, inflation and interest rates on the rise and cost of living and all this stuff is really affecting people right now. So I'm, I'm a big one on teaching people 
how to or suggesting to people how they can go and invest their money you know mm. through different asset classes you know property gold etfs you know all that type of stuff i think that's really 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 important nobody ever teaches you that no though, do they? Nobody ever well, I've, I've got school. an investing mentor now. You know, obviously I mentor people, but mm. I've got my own investing mentor. As you should, so, yeah, really, if you've been in yeah. it, and I invest, I invest in that, and it's fantastic. And I have sessions with him, and I'm in a fantastic mastermind group. Mm. Um, and this is why I absolutely love coaching and mentoring and masterminding and all this type of stuff. Mm. You know, I do it in the property business and wealth space. You do it in the personal training development space. I think it's an incredible thing that you're doing. And more and more people out there, they're waking up to the fact that the schooling system for most people is broken. Uh, the, the, the way we've been told the 40-40-40 plan is definitely not working. And, and people are basically saying, I've got to do something different. And the mm. fact that you're out there, Steve, helping people and showing people how to do this, I think it's an incredible thing. It really, 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 really is. Um, what's been uh, one or two of your biggest challenges maybe over the last year or so? You know, you've scaled the business mm. now just under three million. Um, what what's some of the stuff you're facing now? How have you come overcome it? Or, you know, how can we help you overcome it? I think I think for me, it's kind of, we, we had a little bit of a chat earlier, didn't yeah. we, about like um, scaling a business and like the costs that are required to do so. And I think that's been, I think from, because from the outside, everyone's like, oh, you're so successful, you're doing this and you're doing that. But like when you see this such a big journey in mm. front of you, I'm like, I'm still like, you know, I've been in business for five years. I've been in this business for like two and a half. So I'm like, I'm still really new to this. Yeah. Like I'm still, I'm still getting my feet wet. I'm st like the stuff that I teach is all early level business. So like, that's fine. And I'm, I'm confident with that. Me growing this company from 3 million to 10 million plus is a, is a big jump. Mm. And like, I'm still learning the lessons that I need to. Um, so that's managing that, managing the fact that I'm not there yet. Mm. So sometimes people expect you to like, oh yeah, I've got seven houses and I've got this. Cause they look on paper about how yeah. much money you're making and yeah. they're like, oh, you should be, you know, mm. on holiday every week and stuff. And I'm like, now I'm investing a lot of that mm. stuff back into the company because the next You're step growing is- growing it, uh, technology, staff, all this type of stuff. People don't realize the Marketing risks are the same. Leads, yeah. People think it's a risk when it's like yeah. your last five grand. And I'm like, no, nah, it's not. Because <laughs> if it's my last five grand, guess what happens in that five grand gone? Mm. It's fucking exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> like nothing's got yeah. any worse. Yeah. If I gamble everything uh, and it, it's gone, yeah, it's going to go anywhere. Different situation. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that's a big thing for people, you know, listening in is that they want the reward, but they're not willing to put an element of risk in. And you've got to have yeah, you you've you got to have skin in the game, right? It's so important. And but you got like you're saying, you've got to have the right people around you, mm. um, for sure. And you know, just to just to share some bits, you know, I've gone through that transition. We're probably 18 million this mm. year, my, just my training business. Yeah. And, you know, it wasn't that long ago we were sitting at 3 million and I was really excited. And it was like, oh my goodness, now I've got to do 50 or 60 grand on ads and we've got to grow the team. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, I went through phases where many, many months on the P&L, we were losing money. You know, we, we, were, we, 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 <laughs> we, we were down, mate. Yeah? yeah. So like we were right in the business, but we were the P&L mm. and I, I lost the business. My business before this, I lost, wiped me out, minus 392,000 pounds, Didn't wasn't getting managed accounts. So I always say to people, it's really important to have your monthly managed accounts, mm. be absolutely on your numbers um, and just be prepared to, there may be some losing months as you know anyway, yeah. but it's about building that momentum with the clients and the success rates. And then the other thing that's really helped us, which may help you at some point as well, is just trying to get as many different cross sales in or see what other products and services mm. you know you can offer out to the same client base and and retention as well you know yeah. that's that, that that's been massive for us is the retention and doing everything we can to make sure the clients renew with us for a second third or fourth year um but yeah i'm really confident you're going to get there you know if, you, if you've got a desire for it and a drive for it yeah. you, you will definitely get there for sure so look any anyone tuning in now anyone tuning in now and perhaps they're at a crossroads They've got a passion. They want to take that into profit. What what would be some words of wisdom, top tips, suggestions that you'd like to say to the audience, Steve? Um, make sure your passion's actually fucking sellable is the first thing. Because <laughs> yeah. that, that's mint in it, like, oh, sell your passion. But if no one wants to fucking buy your, what you're passionate about, it's yeah, probably yeah, not I, a business. I like that. Make sure somebody will buy your passion from you. 
yeah. will be my second point. Make sure you can fucking sell it. Well, that's the point, yeah. Like, they might like it, but they might not fucking like it from you. And, like, we deal with mainly, like, personal brand style businesses. Like, if right. you're a PT, it's a personal brand style. Yeah. Like, people buy you. You're all fucking doing training and diet plans. It's not rocket science. They yeah. buy into you. So, like, make sure that you've got yourself mm. in a good situation mm. where you can do it. Um, and then the third one would be you, you just got to have to... I think it's extreme ownership of all of it, isn't it? Yeah, like, because yeah. it's a risk, but like it's yeah. your risk mm. and it's your job to make the risk pay off. Like, yeah. I I find our space one of the weirdest fucking spaces in yeah. the world because yeah. it's like, I think the owner sometimes feels like it's on us. Like, if someone pays you, it's like you've got to make it work yeah. for me. Whereas, like when I was a school teacher, like if the kid did no fucking work all year and then got shit grades, you'd be like, well, it's your fucking fault. Yeah, you did no yeah, work yeah, all year. Yeah, yeah. So it's. Make sure you're willing to actually do the work of what yeah, it takes. I think that's really important. And there's a lot of people out there selling courses and mentorship and programs. And it's like every other person on the world wants to be an influencer right mm. now. And there's a lot of noise out there. But actually, if you have a, a great product, yeah. if your service is absolute world class, I, I just literally had our um, end of H1 Vi uh, vision meeting with mm. the company um, just last week and the whole motto was it's got to be client focused yeah. you know we've got to continue to be client focused they are the most important person in our business because without them we're screwed and 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 you know it's so easy to get a bad reputation in mm. the training you know just like schools and colleges yeah, yeah, and yeah, universities sure. the same right so no i think i think they are incredible incredible tips um so really what is next for you over the next one or two years um continue to build out where we're at i think yeah probably reach into different market. we're predominantly uk based now we definitely okay. want to we've got some really like good footholds in australia and that's the market nice. that's like really up okay. and coming so Great. we're going to expand into there um and then we want to build out our like uk training system so we started very recently like running like eight week mastermind sessions with the uk nice. clients instead of instead of having everything online like it used to be um, and that's something that we really want to nice. kind of build up and build into and, and create that sense of community around it Great. as well. So I think those would be Great. Awesome. Big things. Awesome, man. I'm really excited to see your journey. It's been fantastic having you in the studio. Um, the podcast is called The Dealmaker Podcast. Um, so in your own words, Steve, what does being a dealmaker mean to you? I think putting in the work and, yeah. and finding the right thing for the right person. I think a, I think a deal becomes easy if you've got the right answer to someone's problem. Great, I think that would be great, awesome. love that. And where can people hook you up, mate? Um, social media channels? Um, yeah, uh, across work. everything. So like my personal one is Steve McGrath Official. That's uh, Instagram, YouTube. Um, I think that's the main one. And then if you're a personal trainer that's looking to go online, and um, we have a free community as well where we put like all the basic level stuff in that you need to get your business off the ground. Great. Um, so if you give me a message on any of those platforms, we can get you hooked up with that and awesome. you're good to go. Great. Lovely. Cheers. Thanks very, much, thanks very much. Yeah. Really, 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 really cool.